Welcome back to the Fast Forward Sailing YouTube channel. Today we'll be having a look over the results from the RSX Windsurfer and the Laser or Ilka fleets which race today. And I'll also be going through some of the highlights and giving an in-depth look at the ones to watch in the Ilka men's class and my predictions for the top three. I also have some news from my Dinghy Racing Tips blog. We have a new article coming out tonight from we have a new article coming out tonight from arguably the world's best ever sailor. So before we have an in-depth look at the action from the laser fleet, I'm just going to quickly go through and give you my thoughts on the results for the RSX fleet and the laser radial fleet. Today the conditions were chalk and cheese in comparison to yesterday. We had some stronger wind come through which is what they were predicting. So some of the guys who were doing a bit better on day one didn't perform so well on day two. Right, sitting on top of the fleet after six races, we have Mattia Camboni from Italy. I must say it's a surprise to see him and Matteo Sans Lons on top of the fleet. Below them are the usual names and arguably the favourites before going into the competition, Kieran Badlow and Thomas Goyard. I believe they are both racing their first Olympics after missing out in 2016 because of top-notch competition in their own countries. Good to see Tom Squires doing pretty well in 8th, this is his first Olympics. Interestingly, this is the first Olympics when people I actually know are sailing, so it's great to see the results of the British Olympic pathway coming to fruition years later. Interestingly, Andre Funemark from Norway, this is his first games, I think he's in his early 20s, he had a disqualification on this last race, and I believe I remember seeing him right at the top of the fleet, so I expect he was disqualified from the race where he performed. Not, I'm not sure why. I know some of the windsurfers uh, in one of the latter races looked like they might have been over the line. But I believe there is a U flag flying. And the letters should be UFD if it was a disqualification for being over the line. So potentially it's something else. If you know, let me know in the comments below. Right, let's have a quick look at the RSX women now. Charlene Pecan still on top. But facing very stiff competition from first-time Olympian Emma Wilson. She really is one to watch in the years to come. A most impressive athlete. She almost makes it look easy performing at this high level. And that's a rarity, especially in such an experienced fleet. Interestingly, she's got windsurfing in the blood with her mother Penny Wilson competing in the 1992 Olympics. China's Yunzi Lu completes with the top three. She's counting quite a high result, so she'll be hoping not to make too many more mistakes. The big surprise is Lillian Dehousse's performance. She's had a rather inconsistent set of results. Uh, she was the favourite going into the week, so she'd have been hoping to be higher near this halfway stage. All right, let's have a look at the Laser Radial Women results here. Another surprise leader, Norway's Lina Flem Hoist. Probably not how you pronounce it. After a rocky start, she's pulled together some very consistent results in what is an extremely hard fleet to consistently perform in. Anne-Marie Rindham have a most consistent set of results until a 13th in race 4. But that isn't a disaster and she's got the joint lowest total in points. Holland's Marit Baumeister will be hoping uh, to improve on her result. She's expected to do better. And interestingly, Germany's Svenja Wager, the leader overnight, had a terrible day dropping to eighth. Right, looking at the laser men's results now before we have a look at some of the highlights. Like the laser radial, the laser fleet is, is arguably the, the toughest fleet in terms of competition. We saw some real mixing up of results and only one of the boats has all three results in the top three. Topping the fleet we have Finland's Carl Tapper, followed close behind by the silver medalists from the previous two Olympics, friends and training partners Tonchi Stepanovic and Pavlos Kontidis. Overnight leader Jean-Baptiste Bernard didn't have such a good day, but is still in contention. Germany's Philipp Bull had a great first race of the day, bringing in the second after leading much of the way round. He's one of the heavier sailors in the laser fleet, so he's been benefiting from these stronger wins. So here's a quick look at the results from the last Olympics in Rio. The previous two gold medalists aren't at this Olympics. They're both Australians, Tom Slingsby from 2012, now doing Sail GP. And Tom Burton, who could have been here, but got beaten in the Olympic trials by Matthew Wern. Interestingly, he hasn't performed so far, but a second in the last race of the day shows what he's made of. And I expect to see him climb his way up the leaderboard. New Zealand's Sam Mitch completed the top three last time with a godfather of Olympic laser sailing, 
Robert Scheidt narrowly missing out on the medal. So far, we have Sam Meach down in 17th. Robert Scheidt with a very impressive 8th place, considering he is now 48 years old. He's racing against many sailors who are half his age. Races today. In a sec, I'm going to give you my predictions for the top 3 come the end of the week. But first, I want to draw your attention to my blog, Dinghy Racing Tips. If you want to improve your sailing, there's loads of great articles on here from sailing greats such as laser gold medalist Paul Goodison, 470 gold medalist Saskia Clark, and tonight there's an article going up from none other than Sir Ben Ainsley himself. And it's a great one if you're a laser sailor or simply want to improve on your downwind speed. It covers all you need to know to perform on those downwinds in the laser. But if you're not a laser sailor or if you're not even a dinghy sailor, there's lots here you can benefit from. we got articles on boat handling, boat speed, rules of tactics, starting and strategy. So whatever skill you believe you're weakest on, there'll be something here to help you. I'd be interested in hearing your feedback on the site. Uh, so if you have any good or bad, uh, drop it in the comments below. Right, so now to my predictions for the top three come the end of the week. As much as I admire Brazil's Robert Scheidt, who's 48, and I believe this is his fifth or sixth games, I don't believe he quite has the stamina to keep this up throughout the whole week. He's pretty high up in all these races before dropping back a bit, which to me says he's struggling a bit with his stamina. Philip Ball is one that could well be in those top three. I'm going to predict a third place for him. He's had two tens, which aren't disasters, and a second, which shows he can get up there. If it's strong wins for the rest of the week, I believe we can see him in third place. Francis Jean-Baptiste Bernard. Francis Jean-Baptiste Bernard could be another contender for that third spot. Interestingly, I believe this is his fourth Olympics, and he's improved his results each time finishing fifth in Rio, so a third of a fourth would continue that pattern. Now here are my predictions for first and second. It's really hard to do in the laser fleet just because the results are a bit all over the place. So many good sailors here and the variable wind conditions makes it even harder to predict these results. But I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to put Pavlos Contizis in the gold medal spot. He won Cyprus's first medal in 2012 and I believe he's still Cyprus's only medal holder. Could he go one better and win the gold this time? I believe he's got potential. He's the only sailor to have results all in the top 10. And in race one and race three, he climbed his way up the fleet, going around the first mark in the 20s and climbing up to a fourth and a fifth. So that ability to climb through the fleet is what wins you regattas and he's shown the most sign of it. Croatia's Tonci Stepanovic also shows signs of his ability to climb back up the results. And I'm going to put him in second place. So sorry if you're a Finland fan. I don't know that much about Carl Tapper. It's a bit of a surprise to see him on the top at this stage. Who knows? He could win. There's been a bit of a hiatus in the racing over the last year for understandable reasons. And that does make it a bit harder to predict who will come out on top. Right, there's my predictions. Contini's on top. Stepanovic second. And Bernard's ball. Or maybe Tapper in third. Let me know your predictions for the top three in the comments below. Right, so I'm going to leave the video there. Remember to check out Dinghy Racing Tips. By the time you see this video, Ben Laisley's post on laser downwind speed should be up. So give that a read and let me know your feedback. If you don't want to miss future videos, press the subscribe button and the alerts bell. And I hope to see you in the next video.